I've used RFID in some super cool projects. And so today I'd like you to bring RFID to your super cool projects. So we're going to have a look through what we need to connect and probably in under a couple of minutes, you will have RFID ready to go. Hi, I'm Christine and my channel is all about creating fun and creative wearable projects, things that you can make. I've also written a book about wearable technology, which is available at all good bookstores. So today we're looking at integrating an RFID reader with an ESP32 board. We're also going to connect an OLED OLED screen just for a bit of feedback as well, but you don't have to include this in your project. So we're going to have a look first at the components that we're going to include. We're then going to have a walk through the connection. So how do we connect our components? And then we'll do a code walk through as well. We'll just have a overarching look at what the code is doing and what information you might need to change in the code. So what is RFID and why do we want to use it? Essentially, this RFID board is a radio frequency identification reader board. And with the reader, we have cards, which will get read by the board. So the cards need to be specific distances from the reader so that it can be read. So it will use radio waves. Those radio waves will send the waves to a little chip that's actually in our card or in the key fob. The reader will create a small electromagnetic field. And when the RFID tag enters in this field, it will power up and it will transmit the unique ID number from this as a block. So a series of numbers, essentially. So we're going to be reading the numbers, this code, to the ESP32. Then we're going to program it so that if the numbers match, if this number is read correctly, something, some effect will happen. So what kind of output can you plan for your project? Let me know in the comments as well what kind of project you're going to be building because I love RFID projects so much. That is essentially what RFID is and how this will work. Let's have a look at the components we're going to need for this build. We are going to use an ESP32. This is one of my favorite little boards to use. If you are a subscriber, you will notice I do use this board a lot. With the Wi-Fi capabilities, it does bring some really dynamic features to your projects. We're also going to use RFID boards. So this one here that I'm looking at is a MyFair RFID RC board. I have used this one in a lot of projects. So I do know this board quite well and I know this code is going to work straight off. If this is too large for your project, if you're making it and it might be integrated into clothing and so on, there is a smaller board that you can get and this will still use the exact same tags that we're going to use. It doesn't matter which board you choose, we're going to use the code that will work for both of these boards. So it's up to you. With the boards, you're going to want to grab yourself some tags. You can get them in this sort of credit card shape or you can get stickers, which is really cool. You can also get key fobs or keychains, key rings and similar. The cards are usually very cheap. You can use as many cards as you like. Another thing we're going to need this breadboard just to hook up your components. I'm also going to be using a little screen in the project. You don't have to do this, but integrating a screen can be very useful. We can use this screen for feedback. I did do a video just connecting a screen to an ESP32. You might want to go and watch that video as well if you want a bit more step-by-step -step guidance to it. We're also going to need some hookup wires. So the wires are what we're going to use to connect all our components, a data cable. So to transfer your program to your ESP32 board, make sure you have a data cable. It cannot be just a charging cable that will not work for your circuit. It's got to be data. Those are all the components we need. So now let's jump straight in to the hookup. We're going to take our ESP32 board and this is going to go just onto our breadboard. So we're going to plug this in and you'll want to make sure that the pins we're going to be using for the circuit 
are accessible. Some breadboards are not very wide, so usually I push the ESP all the way to one side. That way I've got enough pins available on the other side of the board. So this will just be pushed in to your breadboard. And these are the pins along the top that I will be using for my board. Do check your board pins just to make sure you've got access to it as well. The next thing we're gonna hook up is the RFID board, plug this also into the board. Now the way these tracks work is these tracks are connected this way. And then these, the ground rail and power rail, go along in this direction, from left to right, right to left. So you need to make sure the pins on your board, they will not be connected to each other. So this will have access to these pins in front of it. And then this is what it'll look like. So you've just got the two items connected on your board at the moment. So I've included a diagram that you can look at, maybe pause the video if you wanna double check the wiring. So this diagram will show you the connections that I'll be making. These connections are very standard for most ESP32 boards, so you shouldn't have any problems connecting it. But I always say, depending on the ESP32 board that you've chosen, always check your pins. So grab the pinout diagram for the board that you are using. In our case, what we're gonna hook up first is we're gonna hook up power. So I'm gonna grab a red wire and I'm going to find on my board where it says 3.3 V. And that means we're gonna have 3.3 volts of power going to our components. We don't want more than that. On our board, it says 3.3 V right at the top here, 3.3 V. So I'm gonna just take my pin and we've got this one little hole here. I'm going to push in my red wire. And with the other end of my red wire, I'm going to plug it into the power rail. This entire rail will have 3.3 V access to it. On our RFID board, find where it says 3.3 V. Again, grab another red wire and we're gonna connect 3.3 V on our board here. Let me just make sure we can see it. So it says 3.3 V right at the beginning, that first pin. So again, we're gonna go and follow the track in front of it and I'm just going to push it in. So now I know that that is my 3.3 V. And now this, the other side of the wire, can go just into the track at the back. So now this means this will have power to it because it is connected to that power rail. So the next pin we're going to look at is the ground pin GND. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a black wire now and I'm gonna use the black wire, put it in the Again, we can follow this line. I'm going to pop it in there in front of it. Follow the diagram as well if you're having difficulty looking at this. And then this will go into the ground track behind it. So that is ground. So now we need to follow the track. I'm gonna grab another black wire here. So here's my next black wire. And I'm going to put this from that ground track so here's ground, and I'm going to find ground on my ESP32 board. So it will be GND. And I'm just going to plug that one in. Now we have power, we have ground, we have power, we have ground to our board. And we can continue working through. So the next pin we're gonna look at, the RQ pin, we're not gonna be using that one. Our next pin is MISO, M-I-S-O. It's part of the communication protocol. So we are going to choose any color that you would like. I'm going for this blue one, no particular reason. And I'm gonna plug it into that MISO pin. And then I'm gonna look at my diagram going to pin 19 on my ESP32. So we're gonna go over, look for 19, and this is going to go into that pin. So now I'm going to also just make sure we do have a reset connected. So I'm gonna use my yellow wire here again for no reason. And I'm just gonna push that into the reset pin on our RFID circuit here. And the reset pin is going to go to pin two on our ESP32 board, top of our board. So now we've got reset in pin two, we've got our power and ground. Next, we're gonna look at MOSI, M-O-S-I. That is the SPI master out, and that is connected to 23 on our board. So I'm gonna grab another colored wire. I'm gonna go for green this time, and I'm gonna connect it to pin 
23 on the ESP32. So we're going to go here and then we're looking for 23 on the ESP32. We can see 23 is just right at the end here. So that's nice and easy. Now we're going to look for the SDASS, which is our chip select. So the chip select is on GPIO 5. So that's general purpose input output 5. If you see GPIO and you're conf confused, that's all that means. So we're looking for pin 5 for the SDA on our little RFID. So SDA is the first one here and we're going to pin 5 on our ESP32. So that is our D5 pin. Okay, so that's on D5 and the last one that we're going to set up is now the SCK which is our SPI clock. So again, grab another wire and the clock is going to GPIO 18. So clock to 18. So look for SCK on your board, which is here, and then find pin 18 on the ESP32. Okay, 18 on my board happens to be right next to five. That should now be a connected RFID board. You can leave your project here and just keep those two components connected and run some code so that way you can just see in the serial monitor what is your tag ID, for example. But before I do that, I will just go and hook up my screen because I do find it's very helpful in our project to be able to see some kind of data. And there's only four pins to hook up. It uses the I2C protocol, so we're just going to connect our power and ground, and then we've got data and clock. So I'm just going to get that hooked up. You can speed through if you're not going to use this. So I'm going to grab red for power, black for ground. Those are going to be the first two, which are super easy. I do have an entire video demonstrating this process, but in this case, I'm just going to whip through it because it's not the main part of our program. And then the ground wire is going to go into our little ground rail and then power into the power rail. It's looking a bit uh, bird's nasty. I do apologize. So we've got power and ground there. And then we need two wires to make our connections for the clock. We're going to put one here and one here. So here at the top is SCL and SDA. My SCL is yellow, the SDA is green, and then the pins for those is going to be SDA to 21. It's going to 21 on my ESP32. Okay, and it's just at the top there, there's pin 21, and then the SCL is going to pin 22. So I'm going to take my yellow wire, which is connected already to SCL on my board, and I'm going to find 22 on my little board here. And D22 is just round about the end there, so there's D22. Okay, so there is our wiring. It looks a bit messy, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and tidy that up. Okay. That's a little bit better. So now we can see a little bit more what's going on with our circuit here. Now what I'm gonna do with our board hooked up is I'm just going to take my data cable, I'm gonna get this plugged in, and then we'll get some code running. So we can see on our screen, it's asking us to scan a tag, and we have a few different um, types of tags here. So we've got the card and our sticker. So let's just run our sticker by the board, and we've got a dancing man. Before we do anything, what we're going to look at is grab the code on GitHub. The first code we're going to have a look at is the one where it will give us the, well, it's called a UID. So it's going to give us the universal identification number for the tags. So in order to use the code, we need to know what is the code on this board and what is the code on this one and scan all the cards. And what that will do is give us the identification number, which we'll need in the second piece of code. And then that will read it and say, if the tags match, if the codes match to do something. So it might display something on screen, it might light something up and, and so on. So let's first grab the very first bit of code. So I'm using platform IO and what you'll want to do is create yourself a new project. If you're using the Arduino IDE, you can just copy and paste the code in directly. You don't need to set up a project. Here in the source folder, we've got main CPP. I'm just going to paste in the code that was generated earlier. You can grab this from GitHub and what this code will do is it will give us the numbers that are on our tags, our cards, key fobs, and so on. You will need the library 
MFRC522. So if I go to my Platform.io initialization file, I can see that that is there as well. You can also go through the home and grab the libraries just through here as well. And then when that is done, I am going to upload the code to my board. So when the code's on the board, we can see there is the identification numbers for our various style of tags. So all you want to do now at this stage is scan all of your cards, tags that you're using and make a note of those UID numbers. Very important. Once you have your numbers, what we're going to do is go back to GitHub and there is a second piece of code. So this code is a little bit longer and what we're going to be doing is just copy and paste that. You can change what happens on the display. So what you want to do is just scroll down a little bit in this program and what we're looking for is the bit where it gives us the UID. So it needs to match. So here we've got if UID, UID equals my UID, that needs to be the number of the card that you recorded earlier. So what you would do is you would just paste in the ID number for the tag that you're using. And then once you have the UID in there, you can change what happens. So in this case, it will show a heart if the UIDs match, or it will show a little dancing skeleton if the we're saying no go, the IDs do not match. And it's as simple as that. I hope you do give this a try. And like I said earlier, I'd love to see your projects because I do love RFID boards. So post them in the comments below.